Ebola hit the headlines in 2014 and 15 when the world's first epidemic killed more than 11,000 people and infected more than 28,000 in West Africa. The effects are still being felt in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. Yet although the virus has been around for 40 years, there's still no approved vaccine. That's something that some of the world's largest healthcare companies are working on. To discuss this now, I'm joined by Dr. Johan van Hoof, who's the global head of Janssen Vaccines, one of the Janssen Pharmaceutical Companies of Johnson & Johnson. I'm Linda Dubley. Welcome to the Business Debate. Johan, welcome to the London Stock Exchange Studios. Um, first of all, just so that people understand what the Ebola virus is, it's been around for 40 years and yet it still seems so mysterious to many people. What is it? Yeah, Ebola is indeed a very long-standing story. It was discovered back in 1976, 40 years ago. And uh, since then there have been more than uh, 25 outbreaks, with the 25th one being the most recent one. From that we know that it is really a very lethal virus, which uh, the breakout is observed really in an area in Central Africa. And the first outbreaks actually happened in Congo back in 1976. A lot of research has been done in that area. However, indeed today we don't have yet a therapeutic nor a vaccine. But thanks to or linked to the recent outbreak, very significant progress has been made, both in the area of therapy but also in the area of vaccine development. It can be enormously expensive for governments to fund research into viruses, and yet the cost, if they don't, can be truly enormous, can't it? Indeed, if they don't, then the cost can, and the impact on the country can be enormous. It suffices to look at the impact it has on people uh, and the number of uh, cases and deaths that occur. The impact it has on healthcare workers. In Sierra Leone, for instance, half of the healthcare workers were impacted, which completely devastated the healthcare system. And last but not least, the economy itself was completely paralyzed. The World Bank deems or estimates that the impact of GDP, negative impact of GDP, was more than 2.1 billion US dollars for the three Western African countries that were affected. And there was also a major ripple effect on the rest of the continent. For instance, South Africa, tourism went down 20%, linked to all of the perception around Ebola happening in Africa. So it was very, very catastrophic, but during that West African outbreak, you were able to make considerable progress, particularly, I'm thinking, about the clinical trials relating to it. That's correct, and I think that this really also related to the fact that at the moment of the crisis, all of the key stakeholders, the regulators in the countries, the Western countries, also African countries, ethical committees and companies, did sit together to really think on how to best address that challenge and how timelines could be accelerated to accelerate development of those vaccines. Now, you've said that no single company can really be able to get behind developing um, a vaccine for Ebola. Why is that? Well, it's, it's clear that development of, of new therapeutics or new vaccines is quite a big change. And it's not that uncommon in our industry that companies do part up to really address that change to joint efforts. And in situations like this one, where time is of the essence, it's even more important to create such partnerships. So we were very lucky early onwards to create partnership with a set of companies such that we could really uh, develop our vaccine regimen, which consists of uh, two doses to give a robust immune response. And we also tied up with uh, academic institutes that helped us actually to launch our 10 clinical trials within record time across three continents. This could never have been done without that type of partnership. Of course, one of the problems is there was eventually vast media interest in the Ebola outbreak. Now that's waned and we've moved on to the Zika virus in South America. Does it worry you that actually attention will be redirected away from Ebola? There is certainly a risk. Personally, I'm not that worried because I see that the regulators, the authorities and key stakeholders all have the right attitude and realize that in today's world, we really need to multitask. We need to make sure that the right funds are available to address the Zika threat, but we should not lose attention away from Ebola because the work is not over and we really need to make sure that the vaccine is ready to be used in case there's another outbreak and that outbreak will for certain come. 
You've said that developing the Ebola virus in order to support public health systems is absolutely critical um, and that you're not there solely to make a profit. Um, but how do you square that off with the fact that you do have to be mindful of your shareholders? It is indeed a, a good question and it's a challenge for a, a profit organisation like ours. However, we also feel that we are fully supported by the board of directors and by our shareholders that when we do this in a very considered way and a very balanced way, that they fully support us being active in this field because they feel and we feel part of our corporate responsibility, certainly if our technology can help to bring the solution to the world. Now, you can't speed up parts of the vaccine development process. There have to be long-term trials, for example. Um, how soon do you think it will be before there's a licensed vaccine for Ebola? It's a good question. Now, there's no black and white answer to that. There was actually several stages of approval. Uh, we actually are in the process of submitting the approval of the vaccine for emergency use. So if tomorrow a new outbreak would happen, the vaccine could be used under certain conditions in that area. And in parallel, we are all working on the full-blown licensing of the vaccine for worldwide use. And we are optimistic that we'll be able to conclude that within the next few years. So what could government and regulatory bodies do to support you in this process? I think they should actually, looking to the lessons learned from Ebola, make sure that we really tie up and formalise the type of partnerships that were created ad hoc during the Ebola crisis. And from that perspective, I'm very happy to see and to report that a few key stakeholders, like the uh, at World Economic Forum in Davos, have decided to tie up under a consortium called CEPI, which actually brings together governments from the UK, from the US, from uh, Norway and Sweden, but also funders like the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Wellcome Trust, and industry, which really has as a mission how to make sure that these type of vaccines can become available in the future, and how can we avoid disasters like the one we have had with Ebola. Okay, Johan, thank you so much for joining us My here. My pleasure. Well, join us next time when we'll be talking about the latest innovations in digital transformation and cybersecurity.